Literature Review, or also known as Chapter 2, one of the lengthiest chapter in our research proposal, or even in our thesis later on. Hi everyone, Salaamu Alaikum, my name is Dr. Nadia, and we're going to talk about Literature Review this week. So remember, in our previous classes, you have already decided on your research topic. And it took you a lot of effort to actually convince me that your research ideas are worth pursuing. So how do you actually sell your ideas to others? By asking yourself these questions. The first question would be, what research question or questions that you are asking? What is it that you want to know? And why are you asking these questions? Why is it important for us to know the answers to this question? You also need to ask, has anyone else done anything similar? If the same exact research has already been done before, why are you still conducting the same research? Is there a reason why? Is your research relevant to the practice and theory in hospitality? Or tourism for that matter? What is it already? What is already known or understood about this topic? And how might your research add to this understanding or challenge existing theories and beliefs? You need to be able to answer these questions for you to convince people that your research is actually worth undertaking. What is a literature review anyway? So, by definition, you can see the long definition there, a literature review or or also known as LR, is a survey of scholarly sources on a specific topic. It provides an overview of current knowledge, allowing you to identify relevant theories, methods, and gaps in existing research. Well, basically, in a literature review, you go over existing articles to gain a better understanding on a certain topic of interest, pertaining, especially pertaining to your topic of interest. So why do we conduct a literature review? There are many reasons why. Well, mainly it is to understand existing research and debates relevant to your topic of interest and to present this knowledge, this critical review of past articles in the form of a written report. So why do we do that? So there's various purposes for you to conduct a literature review. One of the first purpose is to assess the current state of the research topic. You want to know what has been done, what we still do not know. A literature review will also provide you with a theoretical background so that your study has a strong foundation so that you know what theory supports your findings or what theory needs to be rejected or how a theory explains a phenomenon. Okay, it also helps you to establish the links between what you are proposing to examine and what has already been studied. For example, you wanted to study how social media influence travel behavior. Probably in previous research, people have studied how TV advertisement influence travel behavior. So you will find this link or you will be able to understand this link through your literature review. A literature review will also demonstrate your knowledge. How? When you keep on doing research about a certain topic, you will know more about that topic. Okay, you will be the expert in that topic. So you will be able to determine if your research idea is new and interesting from your readings. How would you know that? Because when you search for literatures, you would eventually find a topic that is very similar to yours. Or in the worst case scenario, the topic is going to be exactly the same with your topic. So you need to decide whether to pursue it or not. Because if people has already conducted the same research with what you want to with what, with what you want to do, why bother doing it, right? Okay, the last purpose is to give credit and summarize the work of other researchers who have written about that topic. Okay, there are many sources of literature, as you all know. You can gain literature from textbooks and journals and theses and conference proceedings, unpublished manuscripts, reports, newspapers, well, basically the internet, right? Okay, you can find all this. We're going to talk more about this later on, okay? Okay, so you know that literature can come from various sources and they are actually divided into three tiers. 
one is primary and then secondary and the other one is tertiary. So why did I put a star on the primary literature? It's because these are the literature or these are the type of literature that we would want to include in our literature review or in our papers. Okay, they are better because they get first-hand data. For example, if you go out there and collect primary data, you collect field data outside of um, the university or if you conduct a lab research and you gain data from the experiments that you make. So this is what we call primary literature. And this primary literature can come from original research article that you can find in journals or it can also come from your dissertations, from theses, okay, some technical projects, some lab reports and even conference proceedings. And we also have the secondary literature. And what is this? So basically the secondary literature are papers that summarizes the first or the primary literature. For example, if you take a lot of papers on a certain field and then you conduct a literature review on it this is what we call secondary literature okay and as for tertiary literature it's actually a summarized version of um, the, pr the the primary literature and also the secondary literature uh, the examples as you can see um, your textbooks textbooks are actually summarized um, from a lot of papers uh, if you can look at your textbooks references there's a lot of references there so this is what we call the tertiary literature okay so remember the star we would always want to cite from primary literature you can also use secondary literature if you can find a meta-analysis or a systematic review uh, that would be uh, good as well it will be very helpful for you as novice researchers okay so where you look for is very important so you can look in Google Scholar, that's my favorite. You can also go on Easy Access if you encounter some papers that are locked and you need to pay for it. Well, oftentimes UITM has already subscribed to it. So you can use Easy Access if you're not on campus. So you can use the internet and not the intranet. So oftentimes when you are on campus, you can access um, to journals easier than you are outside, right? You can also find out other online databases such as Elsevier, Science Direct, Progress, Emerald, um, EBSCO, Sage. Um, there's also this thing called the Malaysian Thesis Online or also known as MITO or the Open Access Thesis and Dissertation. Um, uh, the short form is OATD and also uh, ProQuest dissertations and also Open Access Journals. I believe I have shown you uh, in our... Um, in our previous classes how to find for this literature um, let's just go over it really quickly um, so this is your um, Google Scholar if you click on social media and travel behavior you're going to find a lot of papers here so you need to know the boolean operator or the boolean key here um, you can google that it's called boolean um, okay you can like filter I love Google uh, Google Scholar you can also use Easy Access. Um, I believe the login for your Easy Access would be your student ID and also um, the password is going to be your um, IC number. Okay, you need to log in. So this is going to be the um, um, what I call the online databases but oftentimes the online databases you need to pay for it so no, this is not it. It's Sage Publishing, okay? It's not this Sage. It's Sage Publishing. So you can see on the online, uh, on the Easy Access, uh, they have Sage, I believe. Okay, Sage Publications. There, there you go. You have Sage Research Methods, Sage Premier, Sage Knowledge, Sage Journals. Um, everything is there. So this is ProQuest Dissertation. Um, sometimes you can find dissertations. Um, okay, it's available for download. Uh, it makes your life easier and don't forget your sorry not the lip gen don't forget your sci hub right we have the sci hub so just in case if you go on google and you can't access like for example this paper this paper is accessible it's from ncbi so i know that's accessible but some paper especially from jstor um, is uh, not easily accessible so probably you can uh, copy the name and paste it here and it will open it up for you. 
So that's all for now. I'll see you again soon.